What is up guys, it's Awana Turtle. So today we want to do something very different. We want to talk about PSA grading and how in Pokemon cards, um, this is going to be kind of about, um, you know, if pe for people that are considering uh, starting to do PSA grading, kind of like, or, and that's where I'm at, I'm at uh, just some things to consider. So stuff I want to talk about is why should you grade cards uh, or send your Pokemon cards to get PSA graded? Uh, what cards should I send? And then kind of like how much does it cost and how long does it take? Uh, and then number three, there's some answers that at least uh, people might not be crazy about. Uh, in addition to, we're going to go through some of my uh, collection, just, you know, looking through some of the cards and figure out, you know, are, do I want to send any of these cards to be graded, uh, particularly going through some of my unsorted collection and just seeing if there's any hidden gems in there. Um, and if we do have time, we'll go through some of the better ones that are kind of like more likely to be sent. Uh, so we do have a lot of things to go through. And um, yeah, if you do find this information avail uh, interesting or useful, um, or you'd like any cards you see, definitely hit that like button down below. And uh, if you see something that I maybe didn't pick up on, or maybe that's like a, the hidden gem, um definitely let me know in a comment below so lots to do let's get into it all right so we do have three different boxes here uh we're gonna start with uh the two tins and if we do have time we'll go into uh this is the card saver box that you should actually uh to submit your cards you have to put them in these uh and if we do have time we'll go through this box essentially this is like almost filled with cards that are good psa candidates uh just for a quick hint at what might be inside uh, if we have time to get to that one. Uh, so, but real quick, actually last video I forgot to open a pack of Burning Shadows, so we're definitely not going to forget this time. And so let's just get into this pack real quick. Oh, that'd be amazing if we got a, a nice Charizard to send to PSA. Ooh, and that's a good sign. I guess that's the first prerequisite. Actually, let me move this out of the way. We have a Fire Energy. Wishful Baton, Acerola, Gloom, Esper, Pikachu, Noibat, Dupider, Tangela, Plumeria, Reverse, and then a, dark, a Hollow Darkrai. That is not a good candidate to send the PSA. I'm going to be testing my multitasking skills right now to see how well I can kind of like stay on topic while uh, looking at some of the cards. So this is just a kind of like a ignore this $5. Uh, just some cards that I acquired and kind of just stashed away. Never had time to really sort them. Uh, but yeah, back to the PSA topic. So uh, the first topic is, you know, why get cards graded? And to me, there's kind of basically two reasons to do so. The first one being, you know, this is it. Uh, kind of like establishes a bar for quality um, so if we were to look at uh, basically the holy grail of Pokemon at least on the English side would be like the uh, first edition based Charizard and who's to say whether this card is worth like a thousand dollars or something like uh, I think last year one sold for like a hundred thousand dollars was PSA 10 and so PSA is that kind of that regular body can kind of establish a benchmark for different levels of quality and uh so one thing uh, uh i just want to see i'm not familiar with this sigilyph but the tricky thing is kind of like how is the the condition of it so this one does have some nicks um and the other reason to get something graded is simply to protect it and kind of uh you know when they do put it in that nice plastic encapsulation um you know it kind of ensures that it'll stay at, at that quality and uh, ooh, we have to have a base polyrath. So yeah, that's what I mean. A lot of these cards are very unsorted. Uh, so it do look like there's a couple of nicks over there. Uh, it does look like it's somewhat off centered, but this one's not bad. So I'll put this one off to the side. Hitmonchan Shadowless. However, the corners are really bent up. Ooh, the back and someone even wrote on this, so that's a no. And yeah, so as far as like, you know, why get cards graded? Um, and because of those two factors, you know, if you kind of like uh, select cards that, you know, might be of a value, kind of you want to kind of like secure that value and protect it, you know, so those are the reasons to get cards graded. This is a pretty uh, old promo. Let's see what this condition is. Um, eh, not that great. So, what cards should I get graded? This one is interesting and uh, one channel that uh, I kind of picked up a while back was uh, Graded Groudon. Uh, 
and I feel like he had a pretty good answer to that question where his stance was you know there's two, two another two ways to approach it and it's very similar is you know what what cards might be uh, actually worth a high uh, potentially a high amount um, and you kind of want to secure that value uh, by encapsulating it to protect the card long term um, and that that's kind of like the obvious answer and so what that maybe that doesn't mean is you know a lot of modern cards it's would fall under the second reason to get something graded uh, but does is not a good candidate for like you know long-term value uh, with exceptions with like you know obviously like the rainbow rare charizard uh, and then the other important thing to consider is you know what cards do you just really enjoy and you want to see encapsulated so i feel like graded groudon took a very um you know appropriate look at that approach was like you know well his name is great at groudon and he liked groudon so he would he wanted like a psa 10 of all the different arts of groudon and yes yeah, some of them were of worth substantial value and others were like you know probably you could get for a couple dollars or something you know or raw and then yeah putting it in a case for a psa 10 you know doesn't necessarily mean a whole lot but it meant it had a lot of sentimental value to him and uh, so I really think that that's the correct approach or, you know, those two uh, reasons are the correct reasons to grade a specific card. And, uh, oh, as far as this unsorted collection, there's a lot of uh, Watsy cards, although none of them seem to be in that great condition. Like even this one, I feel like this card is very faded, this Raichu. Uh, and you can see right there, actually quite damaged. So, But um, it, I think I'll set all these uh, vintage Watsy cards to the side. I think they don't they don't belong in this uh, kind of like miscellaneous tin. This card's really scratched up. Look at that here. Dark Raichu, the first secret rare. Oh, I can actually see from here. It's pretty dinged up. Uh, the Mew from the promo or from the movie, I believe. A Mewtwo. You can see a scratch right there. Alakazam. Uh, so yeah, that does. Uh, for one and two and actually let's just focus on the cards for a little bit Oof. that was a base set two random Japanese cards what else we have here sorry for the fire truck in the background wow look at this thing like a dog got to it or something Sharpedo then a version. Okay, this is very unorganized. What what are these? Are these the I choose you Pikachu or Ash's Pikachu? Uh, promos. I feel like there there are certain ones that kind of are worth getting graded. I feel like that's primarily on the Japanese side though. It's pretty cool EX cards. Primal Grout, huh? Supposedly near mint. Let's see if that's actually true. I don't think so. All right, so stuff to look for. Um, so full disclosure, like I've never sent cards to be graded. Um, actually, maybe that's a topic worth hitting. Is you know, do I go about grading my own cards, or do I just kind of like so kind of like what I've been doing up till now, and we've gone through a good amount of my PSA collection is basically purchase graded cards and we'll get through like the PSA pricing in a bit but essentially you know there's reasons to do that because it takes so long and it costs so much Ooh, shining legends shining ho-oh these shinings obviously they're since they're so modern um, aren't worth a whole lot however this one uh, you can see something in the corner Uh, so I really lost my train of thought. Here's some legendary collection cards, but yeah, the the grading is quite expensive. Oh yeah, just buying graded cards. Uh, so that way you already know you can kind of like weigh. You know, there's no chance to like, oh well, maybe this will get a ten, so it'll be worth this buying this card raw at this price. Um, obviously, it's already graded, so you it's less risky in that respect. Vaporeon from Jungle. Hmm. I can see a few nicks up there. Not 
Ninetales. Uh, in case in case you ever come across a Ninetales and this 80 is missing, that's a very worthwhile card. Oh, you can tell how warped this card is. Yeah, but we'll put it with this pile just to... Th these, th that pile is good for like a binder or something. A Wobbuffet, Taolucha, and Alakazam EX. Alright, probably around that 10 minute mark we'll get into uh, the PSA stuff. This is a pretty nice Jirachi. Might be worth taking a look at. Some cool promos. Genesex, a little in Ninetales. Raikou, oh, I'll, I'll do a video in the near future. Uh, kind of like a shout out to Mama Gangscon. Like, I believe those are cats, believe it or not. This interesting card right here. I believe this came from some kind of collection box. Then, ooh, Shining Lugia. I'm not, this might be the first uh, printing of a Shining Lugia, so let's just take a look. Yeah, for, for modern cards, my, the way I look at it is if it's not going to be a 10, it's not really worth sending it to be graded, or if there's a chance that if there isn't a chance for a 10, it might not be kind of like worth it. Alright, so ooh, it's going pretty slow, but we'll take a quick look at the PSA website. Okay, guys, uh, here we have the PSA website, so just psacard.com, and then we went to like the services page. And uh, so as far as how much it costs, so this is pretty exp expensive. So we're going to go straight to like the bulk uh, submissions where it's pretty cheap, but it'll just take a long time. And so we're going to look at the cheapest one possible. So the as far as I'm aware, this is the lowest price you can get is you have to send in 100 cards. And then even then it'll still be $8 per card, which again is the cheapest one. Um, so that means... Uh, <laughs> it's eight hundred dollars uh to send a hundred cards in and here it says estimated 85 business days before you get them back that is super long the way i look at it is you take you you, you take all your uh, potentially expensive cards or the cards that have sentimental value to you um send it off with eight hundred dollars and then like months and months later you'll get it back uh so it's definitely uh and that's for the cheapest rate that that's just really long very expensive and so this here it says 85 but then above um actually i think somewhere there's a link where they they actually right here uh basically they they kind of mentioned that they're experiencing super high volume recently i feel like psa i guess is kind of exploding or i feel like um in pokemon it's becoming you know uh still ramping up uh, but so be and here's another thing for estimated turnaround times and then card submission bulk services 100 plus business days so just some quick math uh, since it's business days so we're talking 20 weeks uh, so maybe like five months you throw in like holidays and stuff like that so over five months uh, it's like almost half a year later you'll get your cards back so it's so long but to kind of like and everything in between is just cost more money um, so if we look at some of these, uh, what is this? Five dollars and turn around. Um, but yeah, there's just a lot of different price points, but the cheapest one being that eight dollar mark. And there's one last thing is that you do it does require a membership. So we'll just take a look at that real quick. So PSA Collectors Club member, and so here's three memberships they offer. Uh, so they have like the base one, uh, which does have the uh, bulk services. And that one would cost $60 for a one-year membership. Or you have um, two other ones that, the, to me, the biggest differentiator is that if you go to the 150, you get six free grading vouchers. So I think this is a, like an expedited wait, expedited um, time frame for six cards. And then for 250 that $15, uh, uh, 15 submissions. Um, so that that's... Uh, you know, I guess that's up to you. Um, I could see that 15 just so you can get a get some of send some of the stuff and then get it back in a reasonable amount of time. And then like if you were to do like the bulk, which would be what I would be looking to do, uh, that's where you kind of throw it in that time capsule and forget about it. And six months later, it's like, oh, I forgot about these cards. Here's all those like valuable or sentimental cards coming back. Um, so yeah, that's just some information about the the kind of like how much it costs and and uh, how long it'll take. Uh, just very 
um, you know, it's kind of a turnoff for me, especially when compared to uh, all my collections so far, I just kind of purchased them graded and it kind of takes away some of that um, uncertainty as well. So, all right, let's get back to looking through our collection, looking for those hidden gems. All right, so to pick up, um, I, I actually went through a bunch more cards and I realized that the the phone was not actually recording. So, however, I don't think we hit anything too crazy. Uh, but if, if you do see a card that I'm kind of uh, dismissing, um, and maybe I'm just not aware of what a big hit it is, definitely let me know in a comment below. Actually, I do like that Gengar art. Actually, these are some more modern cards. Which I don't think are very good. Ooh, pre-release Aerodactyl, first edition. Very nice. It's a nice Celebi. Oh, wait, did I already go through these? It's a pretty cool dark rye. Surfing Pikachu promo. Nice. Pidget EX. Sharpedo. Oh, these ones are actually still in the sleeves. Leafeon, and then lastly, a Tyrantrum. Alright, so um, we'll put these back. I do want to hit the other tin. Um, I'm not sure if we'll go through it, but there is some stuff I just want to talk about in that. So I'll just clean up this stuff and be right back. Alright, so we'll have to hit that um, card saver box. Uh, that's actually where the where the Zards live. Um, however, we'll go through this Picaram tin. Uh, so this is a pretty good card for a box for holding like um, the top loaders and even some card savers and so I do want to talk about the card savers where so and I believe this is from PSA where they say that the way to submit the cards you have to put it in a card saver and first a pen and sleeve and then a card saver so here's a and I do want to go through this box because there's a lot some really good cards in here uh, so this is the card saver one and the penny sleeve it's kind of like the ultra pro penny sleeves called penny sleeves because they're very cheap um, but it, this is kind of like how they want you to submit them. And it kind of makes it easy to kind of look at the quality. Uh, this card, it's not perfect. It wouldn't be a 10. Maybe it would be like an 8 or something. And let's just go through these ones. Uh, I don't think a lot of these cards are good candidates. To be honest, I'm not sure why I put them in these. Slugia! It's not bad, but I think I see some stuff towards the bottom. First edition, Mr. Mime. Looks like some damage up there. Pretty cool Sigalith. A legendary collection, my champ. Legendary collections. I feel like if they possible 10, it might be worth it. Otherwise, not so much. Pikachu Libre. Pretty cool card. This Gyarados, is it like, doesn't say shiny Gyarados, but he definitely, looks like one octillery pretty good card definitely not one to be graded though all right so nothing good through here but yeah those card savers that's how you want to submit them to psa and let's go through these i think there's some cool ones in here first edition watsi blaine's multrace however you can see like spots and stuff on it here's actually another one Hmm. That one's. That one's pretty good. We have another Blaine's Moltres first edition. Oh, I can see some whitening on that corner. Arceus, Canyon, Prison Star. We have a Fossil Gengar. For some reason it's not in a hard sleeve. And uh, you can see it pretty bad. I feel like that level of damage brings it down to like six immediately. And ah, this is a good uh, this is a good sign where some of these cards are encapsulated like this. Ah, so we do have some base Watsy cards. So uh, sorry it took so long, guys. But here's some pretty heavy hitters. Uh, I can see a Nick up there. Um, but we'll put this in the pile to uh, kind of like just kind of like that's a good one to end up in a binder. Ooh, Blaine's Charizard, first edition. Oh, how we look in here. It's hard to tell. 
if this is part of the damage to the card or just part of like the case. This is definitely worth considering. Blastoise base. Excellent. However, I can see some nicks. Um, but yeah, the obviously the goal is 10. So in my opinion, even like base stuff, probably not worth sending in unless it has a chance to get a 10. Uh, the difference between 10 and 9, you know, kind of like just drops off hard. All right, we do have a Charizard. Here we go, base Charizard. Uh, I can see some stuff at the top. Uh, although Charizard is kind of like the exception. Uh, even like sevens are pretty good. Gardevoirs. Uh, as much as I like Gardevoir, I don't think so. Ooh, I believe, if I recall when I remember when I got this card, it's, there's a bend somewhere. Let's see if I can find it using the reflected light. Uh, maybe I'm wrong, but... If so, this is, um, I feel like these cards, if, the, ooh, there we go. Yep. <laughs> it's pretty sure that's why I wasn't in a different box that is definitely cards for PSA. But that'd be a good thing to actually wind up in a binder. This thing is super, got super damaged. Alright, let's fly through the rest of these. Base 2 Polyrath. Base 2 is kind of a weird thing where legendary collection is not too different than base 2 but legendary collection is loved compared to base 2 uh oh, we'll talk about this card in another day essentially um if you do buy loose cards to be graded like you have to be careful uh this is actually a fake card we'll talk about counterfeit cards in another video but we'll put this off to the side just because i do want to hit that um ooh, shadowless machamp nice base 2 gyarados Pretty beat up. This one you could tell is like super warped. Um, I, I imagine that comes into play for PSA grading. I'm not sure how much, but Shadowless, there's a little bit more leniency. However, that's too much damage. A Blaine's Charizard. Base Nidoking. King. Apparently costs about $12. Don't think this is a good candidate for PSA. Ninetales. Ooh, this is a pretty cool Snorlax. I believe we already have this guy graded. Polygraph Base 2. Ooh, Expedition Reverse Charizard, I think. Erica, first edition. Ooh, what is that up there? Sabrina, first edition. Yeah, so a lot of good cards in here, but they're just a little too damaged. Misty, first edition. I believe this is Jim Heroes and then Erica's Venusaur. I believe I still need this one for PSA 9, but you can see up here something's going on. So uh, I think we'll still keep these this in the pile of two. It's good for a binder. Let's see, I think this we have a bunch of Rayquazas. A promo scissor. Promo Eevee. This one off to this side. It's a pretty cool looking Mewtwo. Rayquaza from Dragon's Vault. Another Rayquaza. Japanese Slowking. Neo Ampharos. And uh, alright, we'll hit <laughs> fake cards in another video. And that's it for that. And just to power through the rest of this box, Kangaskhan. We are still looking for 10s and 9s on that. Ooh, this is a cool card. We already have this graded though, and it's unlikely to very unlikely to get even a nine. These are pretty cool cards. Oh, this is uh Oh, it's both of them. Very nice, but I can tell that it's pretty damaged. Put this one over here though. Don't remember which Charizard it is, but I can see huge bends in it. And these are all modern cards. Um, so sorry for the super long video. Uh, the next one where we kind of go start looking through some of the other boxes, I would say the cards are gonna get much better stronger uh, and much more likely to be sent off to PSA um, but uh, thanks for watching and if you did enjoy this content let me know hit your hit the like button down below uh, let me know what your own thoughts are and if I did miss something that's worth considering let me know in a comment below you know but you know are you considering sending things off to PSA and kind of like how are you measuring uh, just because of the time investment and financial investment to get them graded what are your thoughts about what you think you want to send let me know in the comment section down below um 
And uh, if you haven't, if you have not already signed up to for the contest for the Ultra Shiny GX giveaway, make sure you go check out that video from last Friday, uh, and make sure you get yourself entered. I'll pick a winner on Saturday morning. Uh, so not a lot of time left. Uh, other than that, guys, if you stayed through this whole video, sorry it was super long, but I really appreciate you sticking it through with me. Um, other than that, guys, thanks for watching. I'm Moana Turtle, and I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.